Good morning, Good morning and, and welcome, welcome to, to Yankee, Yankee Stadium, Stadium and, and welcome, welcome to the commencement pre-show on this beautiful day. I'm Sapna Parikh and we are coming to you live from the field right by third base. We're going to be hanging out with you for the next 45 minutes or so, featuring some of our exceptional graduates and all of your stories, starting with our very first group of students. You are also dedicated to service. All of them are part of the NYU Alternative Breaks program. So you guys spent your break providing service in different parts of the world, featuring, focusing on an issue of social injustice. Amazing. All right, I'm gonna start over here. Alyssa and Maria, first of all, you wanna give a shout out to your schools? Yes, I'm in the College of Arts of Science, studying public policy. And I'm in Steinhardt School of Education, uh, studying early childhood ed and special ed. Amazing, and you actually put that to good use on this trip. So the two of them co-led a trip to Belize, and you focused on environmental and conservation education. Can you talk about what you did? Yeah, so we started our week out at a beach cleanup, and then we worked with a high school and a primary school to develop a curriculum that taught students about environmental education and single-use plastics. Gotcha. And you want to tell me just sort of what you got out of this trip? What did you yeah. learn? Sure, so we learned a lot about like how to serve a community that we don't come from. So we learned like how to write the ask questions to the right people to help us like accomplish our tasks. And oh, you've got this t-shirt, yes. Yes, I got it. <laughs> okay, I almost forgot to ask you. So you've showed some of the people there about how to make a, plat how to make a bag out of a t-shirt. And this is so important because even here in New York, the single-use plastic bag ban is going to go into effect next year. Tell us what this is. Yeah, so um, Belize implemented a single-use plastic ban on April 22nd, and we taught students how to make a t-shirt bag out of a t-shirt. So we just cut the collar and sleeves, tied the bottom together, and you have a little bag. It's cute. <laughs> it's a little homemade tote bag. I love it. Amazing. Congratulations. And this is a year-long program. You have to meet with your students throughout the entire year. This is Kelsey Murphy. Do you want to give a shout out to your school? Yeah, I'm getting my master's degree from Gallatin. Amazing. And you spent time in Arizona over spring break at the U.S.-Mexico border, focusing on immigration. And I know you spent a little bit of time with your team in a detention center and also in a courtroom. Can you just tell us what you saw? Yeah, so a lot of what I saw was a really big dig disrespect for humans. Um, a lot of people seeking asylum they were completely dehumanized at the border, and I think there's a lot of work that we need to do to make it more comfortable people to come to America. And one of the goals of NYU Alternative Breaks is to create active citizens for a lifetime. What do you think you got out of this? So I think there's border work that can be done in New York. Um, like NYU Sanctuary does a lot of really good work here. Um, so if you have translation abilities or legal services you can give to anyone, I think working with NYU Sanctuary is a really good thing. Amazing. And I know there's the echo in the yeah. stadium, right? Yeah. I know. It's a challenge. Amazing. That's awesome. Okay, I'm going to come over here to Margish. And this program was actually created by students at NYU after Hurricane Katrina. And you guys are proof that it's still going strong. Do you want to give a shout out to your school? Yeah, uh, I want to shout out CAS and the neuroscience program. Awesome. Do we have CAS in the house? A little bit. We've got a few people. Okay. All right. Now, you went to Washington, D.C., focusing on this issue of food insecurity, which is the lack of access to healthy and nutritious food. Tell us a little bit about what you did. Yeah, we worked with a uh, D.C. Central Kitchen and um, a local food bank, and we also looked at D.C. food policy and looking at a holistic perspective on uh, food insecurity and really empowering students to look at different social issues and how they can really come up with solutions and really take responsibility for each other. Amazing. And Margish is actually the recipient of the NYU Presidential Service Award. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And I know you created this trip from yeah. scratch. This was a new one. And what do you want the students who you went with to get out of this? Yeah, um, I really want the students who came on this trip and, you know, really worked with me um, to take on their own personal interests in social issues and really engaging holistically and ultimately really being responsible for each other because that's really how these social issues get solved. And um, especially with food insecurity, it's a solvable issue and 
it's not it's it's that we are we have enough food and it's just a matter of redistributing and getting access to everyone. Amazing. All right, excellent. And I know all of you are still doing work back here in the city, which is awesome. Congratulations to all of our students from the NYU Alternative Breaks program. You guys are amazing. You're going to head on out over this way, over to Christina. So they spent their spring break doing that, which is amazing. Are you guys feeling just a little guilty? What did you do on your spring break? I'm feeling a little guilty, but it's all good. I'm feeling inspired. They are changing lives, and our next student has dramatically changed his own life. Jose Diaz is a part of the NYU Prison Education Program. Now, I know you spent just over a decade in prison, and you've been out for several years. And today, fast forward to 2019, Jose is the first person to graduate from the NYU Prison Education Program with a full bachelor's degree. Amazing, yes. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling great. Let's go Yankees! <laughs> Let's go Yankees! How's it feel to be here on the st in the stadium, on the field? Honestly, I feel completely honored to be here, and I want to just say thanks to everyone who has helped me along the way, especially the prison education program and all the students have, who have helped contribute to building the culture of the program, but mostly to the, f to the faculty and staff that have been there. They all know their names. Um, particularly Rachel Bosch, Lauren Brasada has helped me, Nikhil Singh, you know, and thank you to my mom and dad. <laughs> Can't forget them. You cannot forget mom and dad. Amazing. And we're going to talk to you more here in just a moment. But first, I want to take you guys back for a few years, back when Jose was still incarcerated and taking college classes. And it was higher education that helped open a whole lot of doors. Not all students have these tools internalized and they're getting it for the first time after having been away from school for years or just never had any education background in general. They are hungry for information, hungry to use their minds. You know, it really is a pleasure to teach them. When a teacher had faith in me in um, a piece I wrote on um, Whiteness as Property by Cheryl O. Harris, I wrote 13 pages and I got an A for it, and after it was all said and done, she pulls me to the side, said, you know, that was good, you know, you did really good, and keep up the good work. She said, but next time, just don't give me 13 pages. <laughs> but by her giving me that leap of faith and allowing me to see that I have within myself something that, that's worth value. I am in awe of every single student um, that I've taught at Wallkill because um, college is hard. It's hard. It's hard for students who have a really solid family background, a really solid academic background, a really solid economic background. College is still hard. And to do it under the circumstances that they're doing it is, is heroic. College is hard, there's no doubt. I love it. No more 13-page papers anymore, right? <laughs> Now, can you take us back just for a moment? It was 2005 when you were first incarcerated from that gang-related incident, and now, 2019, how do you think you've changed? Um, one of the things I spoke about in that video was taking a leap of faith. And I kind of feel that the prison education pro program took a leap of faith on me, which in turn, I had to internalize and figure out how do I take a leap of faith on myself and make those changes necessary to basically push forward and progress in my life? And how do you think higher education in college classes has had an impact on you? Um, one of the things is helped me with public speaking. <laughs> and basically giving me the tools that I could basically bring into my future to look for employment, helping my families get, a, get ahead, like through the college process, like helping my niece and nephew. And this is just like a whole bunch of things and, and opening up resources that I could possibly use in the food. And your major is Latino studies. What inspired that? Um, honestly speaking, while I was incarcerated, most of the stuff that we were learning were think, dealing with stuff within the black American con context. And I wanted to know more about myself, my history, and what my culture of people did to contribute to America. 
Amazing. And you're continuing. You are not done yet. Jose is officially enrolled as a master's student at NYU, and you're going to continue in Latino studies. So congratulations to you. And I know you already gave a shout out to your parents. You told me that they were the ones that planted the seed of college long ago, right? Yeah, um, basically my mother, she has been like a real rock in my life. And prior to my incarcer incarceration, she had asked me when I had told her I was going to come home, would I want to go to work or go to college? And I had answered college. But unfortunately, I made poor decisions and ended up in jail. But picking up on the seed that she planted in me, I started college in there and continuing out here. Amazing. Well, congratulations. And stay right here since you're continuing at NYU. Do you want to help me with a little NYU trivia? Yeah, sure. Why not? Before we take a break today, we have a, a few NYU trivia questions for you, for all of you out in the crowd. Question number one, how many people were in NYU's first graduating class? Was it A, 26? Was it B, 3,325? Was it C, three? Or was it D, 157? You want to take a guess? What do you guys think? I hear a lot of people saying D. How many people think it's D? How about A? All right, you ready for the answer? The answer is C. Only three people in the first graduating class of NYU. That was back in 1833. Fast forward to today, 2019, nearly 18,000 graduates across all three campuses here in New York, in Abu Dhabi, and in Shanghai. All right, thank you so much, Jose Diaz. Congratulations. We're going to take a quick break. Keep your eyes on the Jumbotron. You might just see yourself up on it.
Welcome back to the commencement pre-show. We're going to hang out with you right until the very start of the ceremony. We still have about 45 minutes left. And I'm here with Tim Lysen. Do you want to give your school a shout out? Steinhardt and MCC. Yes. I don't hear, is Steinhardt in the house? A little bit, OK. Tim is an athlete who has taken the sport of baton twirling all the way to the top. I know you've been traveling around the world, you've been competing, and you have been winning. How are you feeling today? Uh, I'm really excited. It feels like everything's culminating into this moment. So it's really an honor to be here and share my sport with NYU. And I'm really excited to see you perform. Tim is going to perform for us in just a little bit. But first, I want to take you back with a quick video to take you back to show you how Tim's love of this sport all began. I earned the title of Men's National Collegiate Champion, which is a huge honor, and I'm so glad that I get to share that with NYU. You go out on the floor, you're all by yourself, and you can have one baton, two baton, three baton, four baton. I think people just, they have the wrong assumption of thinking we're just another person in the band, when really we're trying to compete and show that we are an Olympic grade sport. It incorporates acrobatic, endurance, gymnastics. It's a whole rigorous sport that people really don't understand. It is extremely dangerous, I'd say. Last year, I cracked open my eye. Freshman year, I cracked open my skull. I've actually already had hip surgery. I've had a hip replacement. But you do it for the love of the sport. My mom was a twirler, and she always tells us that she never wanted us to twirl. Me and my sister, she wanted us to do something different. Then my sister started when I was three, and I didn't compete for a while because my mom was afraid of, you know, bullying and acceptance, but I still was like in the corner watching my sister twirl, like watching her lessons and trying to do the same thing she did. It was like a couple years ago when I decided, I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm going to do this for me. I've been involved in baton my entire life. I had students that I taught, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to compete for them, show them that you can do anything you put your mind to, and show to everyone that no matter who you are, no matter what age you are, if you're determined and you have something in your mind, you can get to your goal. And that is good advice for all of us. Thank you for that. I, we are back here live with Tim and his entire family's here with us, all the way from Ohio, right? Yes, yes, we're from Cleveland, Ohio. Amazing. Cincinnati is my hometown. Yes, Ohio. We're gonna to talk to you in just a moment here. Tim, I wanna to talk to you, first of all, all those injuries. There was a skull injury, a hip injury. When's enough? You know, I think I maybe need like two more knee surgeries and then I'll call it quits, but I'm like, I'm gonna be half cyborg in like four years, but. But it's worth it, because you love it, I know. Can you just tell us a little bit about, I know you've been balancing school with training, and I know there are a lot of misconceptions in this sport. What has that been like? Well, I train four to five hours every single day like an Olympic athlete. However, people don't really understand that this is a rigorous sport that requires that much energy and dedication. And so it's hard to balance that with work and internships and then school on top of it. But it's given me great time management skills. So. And what about the misconceptions? I know you said people often don't think of it as a sport. People yeah. think of it as a women's sport. What has that been like for you? Yeah, you typically see the person in front of the marching band and you said, oh yeah, I know what twirling is. But that's a completely different subsection of the sport. We are training in the gym, we're doing gymnastics, dance, tossing this baton up, risking injuries. And also a lot of people see it as like gymnastics, which is a predominantly woman's sport. However, there is an entire men's uh, section to it and we're both training just equally as hard. Yeah. The athletic component is amazing. So you've proven all of these misconceptions wrong, which is amazing. I gotta talk to your family. So it was your mom and your sister who actually inspired him to do this, right? So mom, I know you were saying in the video that you were worried initially about acceptance and now he's made it all the way to the top. What do you think of all this? Very proud of him. He did it when he was ready and he is broken a lot of barriers and we couldn't be prouder. 
And what do you think, Mom, of, of the injuries? The hip, the, the skull, the eye? Honestly, every time the baton goes in the air, I hold my breath. He's fearless. He's not afraid to try something that I don't know if I want him to try, but that's how he became so good so fast. I think a lot of, you know, we don't listen to our parents, right? What can we say? And you're his sister. Tell me your name. I'm Alyssa. And so he's your little brother, right? What was it like to have him follow in your footsteps? I was super proud of him when he decided that he was going to start twirling. Um, he's learned a lot of lessons from it, and I think that transcended into his success here at NYU and going further into this job. And you taught him everything he knows, right? Of course. <laughs> Do you guys ever perform together? Um, we've performed together before, but today it's all about him. <laughs> today is all about you. And Dad, I know Tim was telling me, I know you guys have traveled a lot for the competitions. I think your whole family went to Croatia a couple of years ago. What do you think? How are you feeling today? We've always been supportive of Tim. We always respect what he does, and we're very proud of his accomplishments. Amazing. All right. I don't know about you, but I want to see Tim perform. Do you guys want to see Tim perform live? Yeah? I want to hear you make some noise if you want to see Tim perform live. <laughs> All right, we are ready for you right over there, and we're going to head on over here. Amazing. I'm going to let you catch your breath. I'm going to start breathing again. Yeah, I hold my breath the whole time, too. That was amazing. Congratulations. I thought you were going to do one, but you did, did it with three, and that was amazing. What happens if you drop one? It's like basketball. You're not going to make the baskets every time. I'm sports. So you just pick it up and... Yeah, you keep going, and it happens. So, but that's what makes it so enjoyable. You know, the risk. You never know what's going to happen. Awesome. I'm going to let you catch your breath. Okay. Thank you all for coming back with with me. We're going to take a quick break here, just in a moment. But I want to have uh, one more trivia question for you. Are you ready for a little more NYU trivia? Question number two. All right. How many visitors does Bob's Library have each day? Is it A. 10,000. B. 500. C. 2,000 or D, 7,000? I'm gonna ask your mom. You wanna take a guess? A. A? Anybody think it's A? No. The answer is A, yes, 10,000. I was surprised by this. Believe it or not, 10,000 visitors come to Bob's Library every day, which is the flagship library of NYU, one of the biggest academic libraries in the nation. All right, thank you so much, congratulations, thank you. We're gonna take a quick break, but first here's a video message from the New York Yankees. On behalf of the entire Yankees organization, I wanna welcome the graduates and their families to Yankee Stadium for NYU's 187th commencement exercises. NYU graduates will receive degrees in many academic fields today but there's one field you have got to stay off of, and that's the playing field.
New York always recognizes a winner, and we are proud of all of you. Enjoy your graduation, but remember, enjoy it from your seats and stay off the field. Congratulations to NYU's class of 2019. Welcome back to the commencement pre-show, and we are in the stands. How are you guys doing back here? I cannot hear you. How are you doing? We are celebrating our female founders and the entrepreneurial spirit here at NYU. Believe it or not, this past year, more than 50, at least 50% of all the participants in the NYU Entrepreneurial Institute programs were actually women, which is amazing, but we need more. And I love this because all of your projects, your prototypes, and your programs are all so very different, which is amazing. I'm going to start with you, Melissa. Tell me your full name and your school. So I'm Melissa Barto. I'm from the Gallatin School, and I concentrated in the art of entrepreneurship. Awesome. Do we have anybody from Gallatin here? Maybe. Then show us your product. So Melissa created Want a Date in your dorm room and it's now in 20 retailers. Tell us what this is. Yeah, it all started junior year. Um, I was eating dates every day and wondering why there wasn't a date base spread out there. So it's kind of like fig butter or apple butter or nut butter, but date based. And I have four flavors, chocolate, vanilla, cinnamon, and pumpkin spice. And I've tasted it. I ordered some. It's delicious. I tried the chocolate. And can you tell us, I think people don't realize how difficult it is to bring a food product to market, including FDA approval. What was that like? I had no idea what I was getting into when I was 20 years old with this idea, blending dates in my dorm, but I figured it out. You have to, I just started by Googling how to start a food company and figured out food manufacturing, food science, pH, bricks, 
I didn't like science, but now I know a lot about it, so. <laughs> I know you even had to team up with a food scientist to make this happen. Congratulations, it's in more than 20 retailers now? Yes, 20 right now, soon to be Kroger online. How awesome, and it's available online, amazing. Want a date, it can kind of be a pickup line too, right? Want a date? Want a date? <laughs> okay, okay, I'll stop. All right, and this brings me to our next group. This is Monica and Octavia. You guys created b -Spect. Both of you, oh, Tandon, right? Shout out to Tandon. Yeah, shout out to Tandon. Yeah, Tandon. We are in the Tandon section, apparently. We also want to give a shout out to our other teammates, uh, one at NYU Langone and one from Tisch. Amazing, awesome. I know it's, we're only featuring the people graduating today, but this is a team effort. So b -Spect, tell us about this. This is actually, your prototype is really amazing and it's creating such, it has the potential to create such an environmental impact. What is it? Yeah, so as a lot of people know, the world has been facing a global honeybee crisis for the last 20 years. And this is a really big problem because honeybees represent our major pollinator with an estimated one in three bites of food you eat depending on honeybees. And because this problem is so multifaceted, um, there's been a lot of research in this space and we decided to tackle the problem from an engineering perspective. And you both created this prototype. We just saw a little bit of video of it. We're looking at it right now. And it tackles this problem of honeybee colony loss. How does it work? Um, so we've been working to embed sensors in a smart uh, beehive lid. Um, and by measuring temperature and humidity and also implementing a basic pest management system um, that's controlled through a smartphone app, we allow beekeepers to take more control over their hives gather more data, see metrics about what's going on, and then take action when there are problems. Awesome, and I know the two of you have actually won a couple awards. You've won a couple grants, I think, from the NYU Prototyping Fund, and I think you were a semi-finalist for the Berkeley Innovation Lab $300,000 award, is that right? Yeah, so we competed all year with our other co-founders. Uh, we made it to the semifinals. We also won a prototyping grant from the Entrepreneurial Institute, and we've just been so grateful for all the support that we've received from NYU. Amazing, congratulations. Shout out to the eLab and the Innovation Lab. You guys are amazing. I am just amazed. And our last student, our last female founder, last but not least, Stephanie. Do you want to tell us full, your full name and your school? Um, my name is Stephanie Page Chambers, and I am in the Interactive Telecommunications program at Tisch School of the Arts. Tisch, yes. And Stephanie is the founder of the organization called The Hotspot. Tell us what this is. The Hotspot is an organization whose mission is to increase the levels of access, awareness, and active participation in STEAM programming amongst the underserved and underrepresented population of the Greater New York area. STEAM, Jersey, I'm sorry. New Jersey, back in your own neighborhood, right, of Newark? Mm -hmm. And STEAM being science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So you're bringing it to this, these communities that really need it. I know you had a couple events recently, and do you want to show us what, I know you had, oh, we're actually looking at these kids who made some of these really cool projects. And I know there's a cultural component to this too. Yes, so I like to incorporate um, both ethnic culture and pop culture. So we had an event where, you know, well, so workshops, we did flashlights and they actually work. I don't know, you can't see it on the camera, sorry. I know it's out. <laughs> um, but we talked about a black inventor whose name is Lewis Howard Latimer, and he helped to improve the flashlight by changing a filament. Um, and we also incorporate pop culture, so we had a Star Wars day where we made little Yodas out of craft rolls and lightsaber cards. <laughs> Amazing, and Louis Latimer, he's African-American, but it's Thomas Edison that gets all the credit. So you are teaching them otherwise, which is awesome. Congratulations, I love the little Yoda. I wanna make one too. All right, oh thank you, okay. You wanna help me with a little NYU trivia? Yeah, you wanna help me with a little trivia? Where's Melissa, okay. Are you guys ready for just a little more NYU trivia? Here's our question number three. Which of these alumni celebrities graduated from NYU in 2006? Was it Aubrey Plaza, Donald Glover, Mahershala Ali, or Dakota Fanning? My guess is Donald Glover. Dakota Fanning? You want to take a guess? I'm guessing Donald, Donald Glover. Glover. Oh, yeah. Well, okay, yes, the answer is Donald Glover. 2006, he graduated from NYU. He actually made history this year at the Grammys. 
his single This Is America was the first rap song to be to win the award for best song of the year and best record of the year. And he was actually a writer, I think, for 30 Rock while he was a student. I know all of you are going to go on to do amazing things because you already are. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Before we take a quick break, we have a quick video message for you from the students of the 1831 Fund saying thank you for making a difference. In 2012, a group of students came together with a shared mission. To help future NYU students achieve their dreams. This became the 1831 Fund. What's the 1831 Fund? The 1831 Fund is a pay-it-forward scholarship initiative run by NYU students where you can help fund tuition for next year's class. Since the fund was established, thousands of dollars have been raised. This money has helped many NYU students make their dream a reality. Hi, my name is Aura, and I'm a senior at NYU. Hi, I'm Caleb. I'm a sophomore at NYU. Hi, I'm Claire Liu. I'm president of the Senior Class Activities Board. Hi, my name is Dina. I am a senior at NYU, and I am part of the 1831 Fund. What's made it so unique this year here at the Fund is that we've partnered up with Class Activities Board to make sure that at every senior event, you have the opportunity to give back to those people that are coming after you. I want to help future NYU students come to their dream school without the financial burden. And I want to help make that a reality for years to come. Students helping other students. That's the power of the 1831 Fund. Your generosity can make this year special. I want to thank each and every senior for paving the path for the next generation of NYU students. There's nothing left to say to the class of 2019, but thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you!
Welcome back to the commencement pre-show. We're just about 15 minutes away from the official start of the ceremony. I hope you're getting excited for our final segment. We're featuring the NYU Camden Motorsports team. So you guys built a car, right? An off-road vehicle. They've built, I think, three over the last several years? Uh, yes, we have done uh, three competitions. So we've built three different cars uh, for the last three years. And how long did it take to build this most recent one? It's around eight to nine months. And you sort of designed this and built this from scratch? Is that right? Yes, yes. entire team, amazing. What do you think, should we show people this car? Yeah, of course. What, you guys want to see this car? Do you want to see this car they built? Yes? I want to hear you guys make some noise. They built this from scratch, from start to finish. Direct your eyes out to the outfield. And you can see this for yourself. This is Marcus coming around the bend. Marcus, the captain and co-founder. Amazing. This thing he told me it goes about what, 40 miles per hour? How you doing? You want to take this helmet off? So this is the third vehicle that they have built over the last several years. You guys can gather around. Amazing, how are you feeling? I'm feeling very excited. <laughs> how does it feel to drive this thing out on the field of Yankee Stadium? It's so surreal. I never thought I'd be able to do this. <laughs> Can you tell us just a little bit? I mean, I know you told me this one is better than ever. I know there's some improvements to this one. Tell us what this one's all about. Yeah, so we were able to design and manufacture almost 80% of the car in-house. And we're really proud of that because like even just making the steering wheel ourselves was something brand new to us. Um, and so I'm really proud of the team for doing that. Amazing. And can you sort of tell me what does this one do? How fast can it go? You, I know you guys have competed. We have some really cool video showing this vehicle in action and off-road. Yeah. So it can go about 40 miles per hour. Um, it has suspension travel of over 12 inches, and so we can go over huge rocks. Uh, we can go over a huge hill climb over two, two stories high. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you have another competition coming up? Yep, uh, we'll be going to Rochester in June. Amazing. Okay, and I know you guys learned about the automotive engineering process from start to finish. I'm going to sneak in here. But I know it's not just about manufacturing, it's also about marketing. Everything's about marketing. And I think, Jimmy, you were the one who was so, sort of oversaw this. Mm -hmm. Did you have to pitch this? Yeah, so the sales presentation is a pitch to mock investors. And we basically tell them how, why, and what the prototype is. And we want to let them know what our product is going to impact the market. Amazing. OK, awesome. How bad do you want? Don't you want to race this around the track? We're not allowed. That would be awesome. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I should tell you, by the way, just for the record, your team has girls, has some young women on there too, right? They were just not graduating at this time. So a shout out to the rest of your team too. Yes? Okay. Amazing. We are just about out of time, but we do have time for one more trivia question. Are you ready? Yeah, you ready? Okay. NYU's commencement used to be held in A, Madison Square Garden, B, Washington Square Park, C, Radio City Music Hall, or D, all of the above. Want to take a guess? D, all of the above. Yes, the answer is D, all of the above. So it was in Madison Square Garden back in the 70s, then Radio City briefly, and then it's been in Washington Square Park for about 30 years. And now here we are in Yankee Stadium. All right, how are you guys feeling today? Are you ready to graduate? Are you ready to graduate? I can't hear you. What about you guys? Are you ready to graduate? I can't hear you. A quick shout out to the entire tech team here on the field, in the dugout, and then the truck outside. I hope you guys are excited. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you so much for all of your energy.
Congratulations to each and every one of you. I'm Sapna Parikh. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.